So I am Mason Thompson. I am 18 years old and I go to Cathedral Catholic High School. So I play lacrosse right now. Um, I'm really into bass fishing. Uh, I go to the gym, hang out with my friends, and uh, work on cars and stuff. So a new one that I just had, I was voted team captain for lacrosse, and it was kind of surprising to me. I didn't play last year. I would played freshman and sophomore year, but I didn't play last year. And so I kind of came out of retirement, came back this year, and it was pretty cool to have that. Uh, another one was, um, 2021 for football, we were we won state at Cathedral. Uh, that was great. Probably one of the best San Diego high school football teams. It was great to be a part of that. This is like a challenge and uh, a privilege. I'm from like a bigger family, and so my parents are both older. My dad is 65. So growing up, being the youngest of four, it was. Uh, It'd be like I'd have an event at school or something, and my parents like wouldn't go because like all right, we already done this four times, three times. Like we don't need to do it a fourth. As I've grown up, I've been growing up on my own, like teaching myself a lot of things, making mistakes on my own, where they would have like stepped in. And so I think that's been uh, it's been a positive and a negative, definitely. It's actually pretty good. I think I'm naturally I can fit in with a lot of crowds and. I can I make friends pretty easily, and so it was, it was actually a pretty smooth transition. Uh, a lot of people at Cathedral, you tell them you're from Scripps Ranch, and they think it's like it's like a ranch. They didn't know where it was. Like they, if you give them the freshman kids a map, you, a lot, most of them couldn't tell you where Scripps is. And I was like, no, it's just right over here. And and um, so it was actually it was a good time playing football freshman year. I mean, that's we had like 90 kids that year, two teams. That was like great. It was really a smooth transition. I mean, I had a bunch of friends, and uh, there's actually a good amount of people from Scripps who go to Cathedral, and so it was nice to have those friends and to kind of have like two different groups almost. And now my Cathedral friends are friends with my Scripps friends, and it was it was a pretty smooth transition, and I'm very thankful for that. I kind of didn't for a, for a while. Fresh, freshman year, I was I was good at getting my work done and everything um, while playing football. But sophomore year, I was kind of like, if it's homework and I can't do it at school, I probably just wouldn't do it or I'd do it late. And uh, I've everyone in my family always had. Like my sister had like a 4.2 GPA when she graduated. My oldest brother Max, he had a 4 like 6 I think. And then my other brother Spencer, he had a 4.3. And so I had these kind of big expectations for my parents and to me that was a, that was a lot of pressure. And then I kind of made it clear to myself and my parents that I'm more skilled in other aspects of life and I can do well academically. I took AP classes, honors classes every year. So what I started to do was really focus on what I could control. If I had a long practice or something and it's 10 o'clock at night and I have something due at 11.59 or 8 a.m. the next day, if it's 11.59, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm gonna go to sleep. And I, I didn't want to stress myself out more with stuff that would stress me out. The school is, it's, it's important nowadays. It's very important. It's not like it used to be. It's, you gotta be able to control it and not let it overwhelm you. So my biggest strategy was just always focus on myself over, over the homework. And if it was like an issue, and it started to hurt me, just talk to the teacher, talk to a counselor, they're there for you and they're, they're, they understand what's happening, so uh, yeah. So I think I'd have to say my dad. Um, he's originally from Columbus, Ohio, and he was born in like 1958. So he's seen a lot and he knows a lot. Um, and so when he was growing up, uh, he was in a like a lower middle class family. They, they did all right. He had a sister, and um, but his his dad took his own life when he was like eight years old. And I mean, if that type of thing happens today, it's not to be harsh, but a lot of a lot of people will just use that as an excuse for the rest of their life as why they need help or they need support or they need special treatment. And my dad it wasn't like that at all. He. Uh, his mom, my grandma, remarried when he was like 14 years old, and his stepdad was a great guy, but they didn't get, a get along. He didn't want to listen to him, so he moved out. And he worked two jobs, 
at a, dr a junkyard and a truck yard when he was a kid. And then um, started working at Stanley Steamer. His stepdad started that company when he was 16. And then he moved out to San Diego when he was like 24 and built his own franchise from the ground up and took a lot of sacrifices so I didn't have to worry about a lot of the things he was worrying about. And it's just, just the mentality that he's always had of getting stuff done. Life's gonna get rough on you, but you gotta, stuff has to get done. That I definitely look up to him for that. This was a tough decision for me, but I didn't play football last year, even though I'd played my whole life. And um, my dad obviously wanted to watch me play, but he was like, I, I told him, I was like, look, if I'm not gonna play, I'm not gonna sit around, I'm, I wanna work. So um, over summer, I was working in the shop, just, uh, it's ba you're basically like a glorified janitor. <laughs> um, but, so I was doing that for a while, and then as school started, uh, I started going out on trucks and actually cleaning. And uh, so I've done the city of Carlsbad, all their libraries, uh, the Gillespie School, private school in La Jolla, I did that. And that one was fun. It was, I went to school all day and then I did that from like 5 p.m. to like midnight or something. Uh, that was, so yeah, if anyone's gonna take it over, it would be me. So that I'm gonna major in business administration. A lot of people in business and just in life go by, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I think he represented both. He was knowledgeable, just quick on his feet, picking things up from a, uh, people he saw and uh, his stepdad and what he would learn and he would perceive things. And so I think business-wise, helping run the business is, it was really just the amount of work he put in. Uh, a lot of guys will look up at the boss man and, and I've worked with a bunch of guys and they look up at the boss man and they're almost unhappy with him because, oh, he pulls up in this fancy car and he does, he's not actually doing anything. But I mean, my dad, he drives a van today. He always has, and he would be the first one there and the last one to leave. He's closed on Christmas Eve every day since he's had the franchise. Just working tirelessly with the other guys. One thing that I know helped him was the level of competitiveness between him and the other branches. Um, just the, there was like a sales war, who could do more in sales? And so he was the first person to do a million in sales, uh, the first person to do 10 million, the first person to do a million in a month. And so really competitiveness and just working with the guys and kind of feel like if you're fresh out of high school, you need a job, like that's how it is. But today, that's not how it is. You, it, it's, a, it's not the highest paying job to clean carpet. So I think what he and a lot of guys who work there, they kind of just have to be real. It's like, look, like some of you guys are capable of great things, but at this moment in time, like you're here to work, you're here to do manual labor. And that's like a dying, it's a dying industry. And so it's like straight up work, you're here to work and you work hard and you work efficiently, you're gonna get paid, you're gonna get compensation, you're gonna learn a lot and that's how it is. So I think just the hard work mentality, that's probably helped them the most. So this is a, a quote from this, this book I've been reading, it's the Marcus Aurelius book and it's, uh, I think it goes, everything that's going to happen to you in life has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. And so I think it's just, I mean, you kind of have to play the, the hand you're dealt and you just have to take everything in stride and know that you're not here for no reason. No matter what religion you believe in or what faith you have in anything, it's, it's not a coincidence that you're here. And so really, if things get tough, I mean, especially, so if, if I'm talking to someone my age or younger, I mean, you're young. You've got a whole life ahead of you. You never know what's gonna happen. You just gotta just keep going. Just one more day and then the next day and then the next day. So one would be to like, I'd say I'm pretty good at it. And I've heard like, if you're good at something, never do it for free. So I wanna be able to, and I enjoy it a lot. So I wanna be able to make a living off of fishing and there's professional bass fishermen, like real deal tournaments that make big money. And so I'd say that's definitely, and there's opportunities for it in college, there's its own league. So I'd say when I go to school, that's one of my goals, be on the college fishing team and fish in tournaments. And then um, another one would probably be, uh, 
definitely just finished my, uh, my, my bachelor's. That, that question can be taken a lot of ways. It can be simple, like music. I love music. I listen to music when I drive. That makes me happy. Uh, I like a lot of entertainment, uh, TV. I love a good TV show. Um, but probably, probably people, just being around people and making people laugh, having other people make you laugh. Yeah.